You can turn any logo into a 3D logo design very easily with Illustrator. However, there's a bunch of things you need to know to be able to do this well. And towards the end of the video, we're going to cover some things you definitely want to avoid. So with that said, let's get started. Okay, so if you followed my recent videos, this logo may look familiar. And what we're going to do is turn this into a 3D logo. And we'll start by going to the 3D panel. And let's select Inflate. Now we can control the depth and the volume of the inflation using these two sliders. And you can also apply the 3D inflation to both sides. Now as far as rotation goes, there's a few ways you can do this. You can play around with the X, Y and Z sliders here. You can freely rotate it using the crosshairs on the object itself, or you can use one of these presets. So you can see I'm using isometric top and I'm now going to bump up the depth to make the object a bit taller. And if I bring down the volume a bit, you can see the object now looks less inflated. And instead we get a nice subtle bevel around those edges. And of course you can add lots of different materials to your objects. I'm going to use the default for this example. And again, you can play around with the roughness in the metallic, but I'm gonna leave these at the default values. Now let's turn on real-time ray tracing and get a more accurate preview of how everything's looking. So you can see it does look quite different. So it's worth keeping this on if your computer can handle it. Now this one's pretty important, lighting. So we've got some presets that we can play around with here. But working from the standard preset, I'm going to play around with the rotation and the height of the light. Two pretty important settings as far as lighting goes. Now before we play around with the height too much, let's go and turn on shadows. And then you can see if I adjust the height, that does change the length of the shadow. And if I bump up the softness, that shadow becomes a lot softer. And if you do need a bit more light in your scene, you've got ambient light here as well. So if you do have lots of dark shadows, this can reduce that contrast a bit. And there's a few more settings for shadows that you can play around with as well. So I think those are the main settings. The most important ones, but I'm actually going to switch back to the standard preset. Gotta be honest, I just love the lighting for this preset, and I'm also going to disable shadows for the moment. Okay, so we're finished with the 3D panel for now. Next, let's select the gradient tool and click anywhere to apply a gradient. Now on the gradient slider, let's select that white swatch, double click the color picker and pick a color. As you can see, I'm using a very specific red. Now, if it does this weird thing where everything stays in grayscale, just go to the options icon in the top right corner, switch to RGB, enter the values for that color again, press return turn and it should work. Next, do the same again for the other side. So we're selecting the black swatch and then you can play around with the sliders or enter a color value of your choice. So you can see I've gone for an orange color here. So we have a nice graduation from red to orange. So that's the bulk of the logo done. Now it's time for a few tips and the things that you definitely want to try and avoid. So you can see we do have this weird hard edge to the gradient. And one thing you can try is rotating the gradient and seeing if that changes anything. In this example, it doesn't. So now I'm rotating the lighting. Again, that didn't seem to do anything. So now I'm rotating the object itself and that gradient banding moves with it. So now I know that this issue is specific to what's on the object's surface rather than something like lighting. And now I know this, I can go ahead and reset the angle. Another trick you can try is moving the swatches on the gradient to try and push that banding out of view. And you can see in this example, this did kind of work here. Now I am just randomly going to bump up the depth a bit. And something else I'm gonna to do to make this look a bit more interesting is select the rectangle tool and use this to create a background that is the same width and height as the artboard. Snap this in place and send it to the back. And then if you copy and paste your 3D object in place and then move it down, send this copy to the back as well, bring the opacity down a bit. And that's a really quick and easy way to create a reflection. Now one mistake you don't want to make is going to the raster effect settings and changing the resolution to 300 dpi. Just whatever you do, no matter how powerful your computer is, just trust me on this one, don't do it. Because as you can see, even just rendering a single preview takes minutes. Maybe for your final render, sure, but whilst you're still working on it, just just no, don't do it. And you can see here I made the same mistake again. What an idiot. Like at best, it'll waste your time. And at worst, it'll crash your document and you might lose everything. So yeah, there's your heads up. Take it or leave it. Now there was some weird pixelation around the edges of the logo. So I did try switching the type. Obviously Revolve didn't give me the look I was hoping for. So then I tried Extrude. Much better, less like a baby bell. Now the Extrude type actually has its own bevel setting. And a way to create something similar to what we had before is to change the bevel shape to round and then play around with the width and height. Generally, I try and keep these two values very, very similar, if not the same, but whatever works for you. And you can see if I turn on ray tracing, that seems to have gotten rid of that goofy, weird pixelated edge. However, now that I've switched the type, I now need to go and play around with the gradient some more so I don't have any of those weird hard edges. But using all of the techniques we've covered in this video, there are plenty of ways to get around all of these little oddities, even if it means just trashing the entire gradient and going with a solid color. So that's how to make your logo designs 3D in Adobe Illustrator. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, I've got some more logo design over here, or we've got some 3D over here. But as always, you've been fantastic. Take care, and I'll see you next time.